Hello coaches, thanks for joining us again. This week we're going to talk about session design when it comes to developing a high pressing system. It can be done alongside pre-season when you've got the players together and you want to get that physical load in and that intensity in and you also then want to move that into more of a tactical direction and you want to look at pressing, something that is still very, very big in the game today. A lot of possession-based systems are also then looking in the game models to be aggressive out of possession. So in this video, we're going to look at how I would design a pre-season or regular season pressing session where you want to keep intensity high and also that tactical information, get that in as well. As always, if you enjoy it, please give it a subscribe below, give it a like, and then also check out the new ebook, Modern Soccer Coach 20 Attacking Training Sessions. If you want more defensive ideas, there's an also pressing book, Modern Soccer Coach Press, and you can get both of them on modernsoccercoach.com slash shop and the link below. Here we go, pressing. All right, so before we start, we'll take a look at the checklist, basically, to make sure we're, we're getting our objectives for the session. And prior to designing a session like this, I think it's important to look at your game model, probably designed before the players coming in and looking at those principles and making sure those principles are consistent with the design of the session, making sure there's moments in there that you can address them and that you can highlight them. So, for example, a defensive principle may be distance to the ball, the type of pressure, the body shape. When you're then also build it in, if you have too much of it, then does it get in the way of intensity and flow? I would also make sure that whenever you're designing a press and session, that intensity and flow are right up there at the top of your priorities, making sure that the management in terms of the times, in terms of the spaces of the ex the grids are exactly right and making sure that you get that workload in and then also that flow so the players can experience those decisions. And number three, move along nicely, experience mistakes. So very, very rarely will you have a pressing system that works correctly all the time. There are going to be moments when, especially if you're playing at a high level, the opponents will break a press Players have to experience that and work around that. So can you tie that into the training session so it's not too easy and they're not winning it all the time? You're giving them different problems. They're going to have to solve them on the pitch. So they're going to have to experience them during the week. Number four goes alongside number one, addressing details for the upcoming game. So that might be the type of shape, not necessarily your principles, but maybe as we'll look in this session, how you're going to play against a certain opponent. What do we know about that opponent? Again, the higher the level you go, the more information you're going to have about the opposition. So you're going to have to layer that into the training session. And then number five would be then create the opportunities for further discussions. How do you do that? Asking players questions. How did you feel about that distance? How did you feel about moving over there? How do you feel about the space in behind there? How do you feel about the space ahead of you? All these questions that you can follow up with. Video is one of the best ways to have these conversations. You can sit down with a player, sit down with a unit, sit down with a team and just go through how they experience the training session, what they think. And those two-way conversations help a great deal with coaches when it comes to how they're going to set up, what they're going to give up. Because pressing invariably is giving something up. You want your players to be comfortable and confident about spaces that they're attacking, about spaces that they're leaving behind about spaces that maybe they happen to cover somebody else, video is brilliant in doing that. So before going into a training session and looking at a plan, I would want to make sure all five of those areas are addressed moving in. Things that I would avoid when creating a press and training session would be, number one, just repeating set scenario over and over again. Yeah, the players might be really comfortable in ball goes to full back, they shift across, it goes to centre back and they press aggressively. Again, the reality of the game, the higher the level you go, the more adaptions the opponent are going to make, especially if your press is good, they're going to adapt. You want your players to be able to adapt with it. If they're just used to one scenario, then are you really, really coaching pressing? Or are you just coaching one action? So making sure that they're getting challenged in terms of their decision and in terms of the pictures they're seeing. And then not stopping it every time there's a break. And we've got a quote coming up here now from Brendan Rogers that I think is really important, but making sure that you adapt and then repress and go again. If the players get conditioned to stop and every time a press is broken, then it's going to lead to bigger problems 
down the pitch. So you want them to, again, experience those mistakes or experience the opponents. Maybe they do it really well and they do something and they break through it. And then it's adapt, 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 repress, go again. And that mentality piece becomes crucial. Understanding the spaces. If the spaces are too small in your session design, yeah, the, the players can experience great success. It might not be realistic. If the spaces are too big, it, it may also be an issue with loads or also with trying to get something out of the session. Maybe you're looking at really working the three midfielders or maybe you're working in that space between midfield and defence. And if you use a full pitch, you only get three or four of those scenarios for an hour and a half. So making sure that you're really deliberate about spacing and making sure those spaces line up with your objectives in the training session. And then the last part, try and move away from coaches saying everything and it sounds great and i know it's something that we probably fall into a trap of because we see high level managers like Klopp on the bench and, and being quite vocal but they're not dictating every single action of liverpool press and because the game just moves too fast and you'll find out yourself that if you get in the habit of dictating everything for a player then the player invariably will turn around and ask you what next and the, the game is, is flying by them. So allowing the players, not just experiencing the mistakes that we talked about before, but also allowing them to experience flow and giving them the responsibility to make those decisions and to adapt to those decisions and then maybe following up with a video later on or during the week. All right, here's the session. So for a warm-up, I would want something that gets the ball moving and also then gets the players used to those press and actions doesn't have to be position specific but in this one here we've got three teams of four one team in yellow is the defensive team blue and red are the possession teams now what the possession teams are doing in their side of the pitch are looking to complete three passes and then transfer the ball to the other side through the side gates the defensive team are going two at a time so two yellows press the reds and two other yellows press the blue when you're not pressing, you're screening that middle area, you're not allowed to pick off passes that go through the side gates, but you can always pick off passes and intercept passes in that central channel. If the defensive team win the ball then, they can score immediately in those many goals. Of course, if the possession team lose it, they can defend. This is great for quick moving games, when to drop in, when to recover, players are working all the time. I would go 60 seconds, change the team. 60 seconds, change the teams. Having that defensive team working hard, but not working too much, and then allowing the whole group to experience those defensive moments. And then for the next exercise, we start moving into more specifics in terms of not just the principles that we kind of worked on in the warm up, but also specifics around the opponent and what we're going to be presented with in the game. Now, I'm going to plan to press in a 4-3-3 or a 4-1-4-1 with two 10s pressing the 6 and 8. I'm expecting to play against a 4-2-3-1. So for this one here, we'll put out a back four and we'll put in a red, two holding midfielders. Then you've got our front three and our two attacking midfielders. So what we'll also do is, because I don't want the ball going central into their number 10, we'll add a number 10 and a goalkeeper. So there's going to be two groups of defensive players and we'll rotate them quickly so we get the intensity and the flow out of the exercise. So the coach is going to start the exercise, is going to play into the goalkeeper. The red team are looking at possessing the ball and circulating possession and trying to get it into the side goals for one point or into the number 10 who is limited to two touches. But if they score... They get three points. If the blue team scores, they get one point. Every time it's a new set, it's a new group of blues. So ball's played in, try and break pressure, and they win it, and they score five blues off, five blues on. And what this is great for is allowing players to experience different types of solutions. So in this one here, they go and read the exact same thing, but now it's bounced in, and then split pass, touch, and finish. So you try to give them conditions in the game that allow them to experience different things at a fast pace, keeps it competitive, keeps it enjoyable, and allows you to build on the momentum from the warm-up along with having a little tactical concept in there as well. All right, now I'm going to go to half pitch. Now the spaces get bigger and I can paint the picture 
of what we expect build up to be with the opponents that we've scouted. So in this case, like I said, 4-2-3-1 from the opposition. We're going to press in a 4-3-3. We expect the ball to go short in the build. We're all going to shift across, especially we're going to ask our weak side 7-11 to really commit to pushing across towards the frame of the goal. But we're also going to give up that weak side space. So understanding that that's what we're going to give up, this is what we're going to try and design a session around, preventing our opponent from accessing the weak side space where they can create an overload or a potential 1v1 in the final third. So putting that into an exercise and painting the picture, what we'll do is we'll put a vertical line down one half of the pitch and when the opponents choose a side to build, we are going to award them two points if they score in the mini goal at the other end of the pitch. So that allows us to, again, incentivize the game to show the players that we don't want that far side access and then incentivize them to win the ball high. If they score off a press, they get two points all the time. By highlighting the fact that we want to commit to that there allows you to paint the picture that you can get player to player coverage on one side of the pitch. And then also that and that weak side attacker is splitting the difference between the center back and the outside back and allows them then to potentially press a ball inside the penalty box. In this example, they win the ball back and they score. Three sets of four minutes, keeping the game moving, keeping it competitive, and then allowing the players to have conversations around that is very, very important. And then the last game, 11 v 11. I wouldn't go full pitch because I want the intensity and the passing and the game to be quick and sharp. So I would go 18 to 18. I would have one condition and one condition only. That is if the pressing team win the ball in the opposition half and transition to score, the goal counts double. So now they've got to make that decision when to go, if they can go, and then it might be some communication between the centre-backs to say, hey, we don't want to give up this space now. So it allows them to work as an 11. It gives them an incentive, but it doesn't restrict them to just that. There allows them to just play the game too. And then hopefully you're, you're going to try and see the comfort level in players, see what they think allow them to talk to each other and then allow them to talk to you at the breaks. I would go two or three games of seven minutes, just letting it flow. Maybe you stand back, maybe you let an assistant coach get in the middle of it to drive the intensity and you take a step back and just watch. Maybe you take a step back beside the goal, listen to a goalkeeper or a centre back and just give you a different viewpoint as a coach to finish it up. So there you have it. Training session, four aspects, four different exercises. Again, making sure that you do the objectives at the start, making sure that you do video at the end. If you've got access to both and you've got some scouting work, it can really, really add detail to your coaching alongside your principles. So the more detail I think you can add without stopping the session and saying, stop, you go there, you go there. The more detail you can add and then follow up with players the more you will hear about how confident they are and maybe their concerns with one or two scenarios and then maybe you can revisit that at a different session. If it just is coach-led, 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 coach-led and you don't have those conversations, maybe you find out on a Saturday that they weren't as confident as you are in going into the spaces and you would rather find out on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday from the players what they think if you enjoyed it please give it a like below if you want a topic discussed or you have a request that you would like something looked at please put it below or you can just email me gary at modernsoccercoach.com if you want more exercises attacking wise please check out the ebook modern soccer coach 20 attacking sessions if you want more defensive work please check out modern soccer coach pressing ships worldwide you can get your copy within a week modernsoccercoach.com slash shop. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you next week.